Well, this is the day the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad, be grateful in it. Good morning to you. I am so delighted that you are with us. Amen. We're still doing this teaching on do not complain, speak the word only. So I pray this message is really helping you to grow, amen, in your, in your knowledge, amen, of the importance of speaking the word, amen. So I pray that the Spirit of God is doing a work inside of your heart, working in you, first and foremost, and then through you for God's glory, for your good, and for the good of everything and everyone connected to your life and to your stewardship. Amen. So again, go on and take out your Bibles, open up your Bibles, open up your hearts, get ready to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, the ever living seed of the word of God. You know, the word of God comes to transform us. It comes to touch us. It comes to touch our situations. It comes to deliver us, inspire us, correct us, convict us. The word comes to do a multiplicity of things. Whatever we happen to need in a moment, God has provided, provided it for us in his word. Amen. So go on and get comfortable, get your cup of coffee, get your Bible, sit back and relax and get ready to receive this word so your life can change for the better. You know, God has good things in store for you. Amen. So again, we're talking about complaining. Do not complain about anyone or anything anymore. Speak the word. Oh, put your hand on your heart real quickly. Put one hand toward heaven. Repeat after me. Say, I will not complain about anything or anyone anymore. I will, I will speak the word over everything and everyone in my life and in my stewardship in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Oh God, speak the word. There is power, say power. There is power in the word, amen. There is no power in complaining, amen. You can complain from now until the sun goes down 24-7, 365, and I can promise you things in your life will never change. Amen. They will stay exactly like they are. You can complain and remain in your situation or situations, or you can praise and be grateful and be raised, be elevated above that situation, above those circumstances and live the victorious life. Amen. That Christ died to give you. How about that? I think that's a much better solution. Amen. Don't you want to live a cheerful life? Don't you want to have and enjoy life? Hey, that's what Jesus died to give you, a, the abundant life to the full, overflowing, amen, full of the goodness of God. And complaining will never produce that. So let's go on. We're going to transition into prayer, amen, then get right into this teaching. But before we do that, put one hand on your heart, put one, one hand toward heaven. Let's make our confession. You know what I'm going to say? Just go ahead and say it with me. God loves me with an everlasting love. Yes, he does. And so do we. I don't ever want you to forget that. Amen. We love you guys. We love you so much. Amen. God loves you so much. We love you enough to speak the truth to you in love because we want you to do better. We want you to be better. The Bible tells us that you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. And we want you to be free, free from Satan and free from sin. Amen. How about that? So again, let's go on a transition into prayer, get back into this teaching and see what the Lord would speak to our hearts on this beautiful day. So Father, we thank you this morning for everything that you're gonna do. Thank you again for moving supernaturally by your spirit. Father, our hearts are open to you. Father, we are receptive. We are ready to receive, Father God, whatever it is that you wanna to speak to us. May the word today go deep down into, Father, into the good soil of our hearts and begin to produce. And thank you, may it come out of our mouths and spill over into our lives, Father. So godly change can, uh, can, uh, can, can manifest, sir, for your glory, for our good, and for the good of everyone and everything connected to our lives. So, so as always, Father, may the words of my mouth, may the meditation serve my heart, be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. For you are my rock and my redeemer. And this in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, 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 amen. So we're saying, or we're talking about rather, do not complain. Do not complain. Speak the word only. So I'm going to go back and read, read this at that definition of what complaining is. Amen. And then we're going to catch up in the message. How about that? So we said that complaining is worthless, evil, unproductive, and unscriptural communication. It's really ungodly conduct or behavior. Amen. As well as communication. It means to gripe, it means to grumble, it means to whine, it means to bellyache. God is saying, do not 
complain. You know, my mother used to say this a long time ago. If you can't say anything good, then don't say anything at all. Amen. If when you open up your mouth, all you're doing is just is just saying uh, negative things and you're just complaining, then you probably should just shut up. I say that respectfully. Shut up until you can say until you can begin to say what the word says. Amen. So sometimes silence really can be goaded. <laughs> Amen. And sometimes we just need to be quiet until we can get into a position to where we have the faith in our hearts and the confession to go along with it. So when we begin to speak, we're saying what the word says and not what our flesh wants to say. Remember, when you complain, complaining is a work of the flesh. It's the voice of your flesh. It is the voice of defeat. It is the voice of unbelief. Guys, I'm telling you, complaining is negative, negative, bad, bad, bad for you. Bad for you and bad for your family. So let's go back over to Philippians. I want to read that, that scripture again, Philippians 2.14. Again, I'm going to read it again in the Amplified Bible. Then I'm going to read it also again in the Passion Bible translation. So here's what it says. Do all things without grumbling, without fault finding, and complaining against God, and questioning and doubting among yourselves. God is saying, just don't do it. Just don't do it. Do not complain. Passion Bible translation says, live a cheerful life without complaining or division among yourselves. Among yourselves. Guys, complaining is a deadly, well, I hope you're taking good notes. Complaining is a deadly, dangerous, demonic, spiritual force. Say that one more time. Complaining is a dangerous, deadly, and demonic and divisive, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, spiritual force, it destroys everything and everyone that it touches. Just like a blood clot, you know, blood clots, wherever they settle, they always kill, amen. But it is so detrimental to you and to your family. Complaining demoralizes and diminishes you. And guys, most importantly, and especially complaining uh, negatively affects demoralizes, diminishes the people in your life. Amen. It's a really, really terrible thing. And let me tell you what the devil, the devil uses complaining to separate us. Amen. Complaining is an extremely divisive, spiritual, negative, demonic force as well. Amen. And the devil uses complaining to separate you from God to separate you from his word, the truth of his word, and to separate you from the people in your life. Because I can tell you, most people that I know, they don't like to spend a lot of time around people that constantly complain. Guys, complaining, it is a spiritual repellent. It is spiritually abrasive. It's what my husband calls salty. You know, they say that a lot, you know, people that are from the Caribbean. You know, you're being salty, Cynthia. Well, guys, when you complain, you're being spiritually salty. And I don't know if you've ever eaten any food where people put too much salt in it and it's so nasty to where you can't even consume it. It's like, man, if it wasn't so salty, I could eat this. But because it is, I can't. So every time, guys, that you are constantly complaining, amen, about any and everything to the people in your life, what you're doing is that you're pushing those people away. Amen. You're sabotaging the relationships in your life. Amen. You really are producing death. Amen. In your family, in your relationships, in your life. Remember, anything that comes out of the flesh always produces death. Anything that comes out of the spirit always produces life. That's why God is saying, I've called you to the spirit field life. Speak my word. My word is spirit in this life. Speak the word. Speak the word over everything and everyone in your life. Stop complaining, guys. Stop complaining. Put your hand back on your heart and say, I will not complain about anyone or anything anymore. So God is saying, just don't do it. And do not do it. Do not complain. So stop complaining about the cost of gas and groceries. Tell you, so you can go to the grocery store and stand in line for like just a second and somebody in front of you or behind you will start talking about how much food costs and how high gas is and you know they'll have something negative to say but stop talking about how expensive gas and groceries are are they expensive yes 
But instead of complaining about it, just thank God that he meets all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And begin to pray against those high gas prices. Amen. The increase on foods. Begin to pray against that. Stand against it. Confess what the word says. Stop complaining about your spouse and your children. There are a lot of people, guys, they are definitely fault finders. Most people that consistently complain, they're fault finders. They're always looking for something wrong. And they're always looking for something wrong in you. Amen. No matter how, how hard their children might work to please them. Let me tell you what, most children, they want to please their parents. But with some kids, no matter how hard they work to please their parents, instead of their parents being focused on all the good things that they're doing, they point out all of the negative things that they, that they did or the things that they didn't do and should have done. Really? Do you know how discouraging and how demoralizing that is? How that diminishes your child? If you point out every single thing that they do wrong and you never encourage them in any other way? Again, people that complain, they find fault with everything that people do. Also, people that complain, guys, let me tell you what, they're never satisfied. It wouldn't matter what their kids did. Some people, it'll never be enough for them. They're like a, they're like a bottomless pit or hole that could never be filled. So no matter what you say, no matter what you do for them, they'll always find something that is wrong. Amen. So again, the devil uses complaining to separate you from God, separate you from the word of God and separate you from the people in your life. So again, stop complaining about groceries, stop complaining about gas, stop complaining about your spouse and your children. Stop complaining about what's happening in the country or what's happening in the world. You get into prayer, begin to speak what the word says, guys. Be a part of the, of the solution and not of the problem. Amen. Stop complaining about your finances or your lack thereof. Stop complaining about your job, your colleagues, your supervisors. Maybe it's not them. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's the words that you're speaking that's creating the situation that you're in. There is no power, guys. There's no power. There is no deliverance in complaining. None. Again, you can either complain and remain or you can praise, be grateful and be raised. Allow God to elevate you above that situation. Amen. But you can't do both. You're going to do one or do the other. Amen. So if you want, let me close out with this. If you want godly change produced in your life and in your family, Start and keep speaking the word of God over everything and everyone in your life. Let me say that one more time before we finish up. If you want, if being an operative word, if you want godly change producing your life and family, start and keep speaking continuously the word of God over everything and everyone in your life. Amen. So in closing, I want to encourage you to give to the Gideon 300. Please give the KPLE their good ground to get into. Give the family Dominion Church. Amen. We welcome your contributions. We thank God for you and all that you do for these two ministries. God bless you, and we will see you next week.